I'm John Sadler. I'm a military historian and author. I'm extensively published on medieval warfare, Anglo-Scottish border wars and both world wars. And I've been a battlefield tour guide for roughly the last 30 years. I think I have to say my favourite battlefield is Culloden, of course, near Inverness in Scotland, site of the final defeat of the Jacobite armies in 1746. Uh, why is it my favourite? Well, I've been going there since I was a boy and since I read John Preble's account of the battle, which was one of the uh, formative influences on my decision to become or study military history. And I was also instrumental uh, as part of the team, which a full part of the team, which funded and constructed the new visitor centre there a few years back, which is, and has opened up the battlefield, so I now think it's one of the best interpreted battlefields in Britain. That's a very tricky question. I think my personal choice would be Julius Caesar, uh, based not just on the Gallic Wars, also on the Civil Wars, and I think perhaps his most influential campaign in terms of his enduring fame, in terms of his appeal for me, is the campaign of 52 BC, where he was caught very much on the back foot by Vercingetorix, but which ended with a, an epic victory at Alesia in the autumn of that year. The obvious answer for that, certainly from a, an English perspective, has to be the longbow. And I don't think I don't think one could really argue against that because clearly the Longbow was instrumental in responsible for so many English victories during the Hundred Years' War with France, during the Three Hundred Years' War with uh, Scotland, and also battles like Najera in Spain in 1366, and of course Crispin's Crispian, uh, which in both historical and literary terms is one of our perhaps our most famous battles. So I think it has to be the Longbow. Um, I like TC because the people that one meets on the tours are all enthusiasts. They are generally, I think without exception, and I've been doing it for quite some years now, very nice people there. And it's almost like you're away with a group of friends. And of course I find that I am extremely well supported as a guide by the tour managers. The TC tour managers are absolutely first class, tip top. I think the most enjoyable stroke memorable moment for me, certainly in recent years, was the reenactment of Hastings on the 950th anniversary. I know the group I was there really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a very well attended event in terms of, of the number of reenactors on the field. And I think it really created a good finale for the Winner of the Conqueror Tour. And the people are actually watching a reenactment of the battle, which is well done on, of course, the actual site where it occurred. I, in terms of medieval history, it's the, the area which I live, which is Northumberland, which is full of medieval history. Some of the grandest castles in the country, Bambra, House Alec being obvious examples. That, and living in that environment, and also watching uh, Dates Made Children's Television, uh, I suppose you're going to blame anybody, blame Richard Green as Robin Hood in the late 1950s, or King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, or uh, Ivanhoe, Roger Moore as Ivanhoe. That's a tricky one. I'm, there's a number of which I'm quite fond. I think probably overall it's the Charge of the Light Brigade. Tony Richardson's 1968 film, not the early one with Errol Flynn, which played fast and loose with history. Charge of the Light Brigade, exceptionally well made film. Uh, it uh, reflects fully the social mores that were around in the Victorian period. And it's also a great action movie. The detail of kit, I'm an anorak, the detail of kit weapons, the actual uh, nature of the battles themselves is very, very well portrayed and the historical characters are very well portrayed. It's one of those films well, 50 years old now and it hasn't lost, for me, hasn't lost any of its magic. I think for me that's probably Borodino, the site of the great battle, the epic battle between Kutusov leading the Russians and Napoleon Bonaparte leading the French in September 1812 one of the biggest and bloodiest battles fought in European history, certainly or even world history, until probably Gettysburg, I guess, or 
much bloodier battle of Waterloo, and yet fought over a relatively tight landscape. And I know that most of the main features of the battle, the rescue redoubt, the progression of flesh, have actually been restored by the Russian, by the Russian state, and therefore it's possible to get a very, very good view of this field. I understand, not having been there, but indeed I very, would very much like to do so. I've just mentioned Russia, but I think actually if I was given a, a sort of free dip, as it were, into the current TC tours, it would have to be the American Civil War for me. I've read a lot about the American Civil War, I've even talked the American Civil War, but I've never visited any of the American Civil War battlefields, Gettysburg, Bull Run, etc. And I'd very, very much like to do so, I think, to go around in a, on a TCE tour with somebody who really knows what he's talking about, who's a real expert. I'd be perfectly happy just to be a visitor, a guest, and uh, taking the experience. Oh, I think there's a couple. I mentioned 1812. I think Napoleon's decision to invade Russia in 1812 definitely ranks as a major catastrophe. Really, that was the beginning of the end for Napoleon. And I think the other has to be another invasion of Russia, Barbarossa, on the 22nd of June 1941. That was a decision which undoubtedly cost Hitler the war. So invasions of Russia, either one of those, are probably certainly pretty much near the top of history's great military blunders. There are quite a few, and although there's been a lot said about the nature of the Western Front in the First World War over these centenary years, I still think there are a lot of misconceptions. I think there is a belief that the war, there's still this belief that the war was this static slaughter of armies and trenches, and that that never changed from 1914 to 1918. I think what is not understood is that the nature of the war, the tactics which were employed, the weapons which were used, and above all the size of the armies, changed exponentially every year. The Great War was not a static contest. It appeared to have been, but there was in fact a vast amount of differentiation between the nature of the war in all of the four years.